they're gorse flowers. In my next recipe, I'm going to try something completely new, never been done before in the history of winemaking. Gorse bushes, wonderful yellow bushes that adorn the Scotland's countryside everywhere up here. I've been wondering what to do with these wonderful yellow flowers. So I'm going to make some wine from them. Not just any wine. I have an idea. I was wondering what the best method of extracting all the flavour, the coconutty flavour of gorse flowers is. You don't want to boil petals to make a wine. You want to simmer them slowly and for as long as you can at a nice long simmer. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to simmer these in the most unusual homebrew way. I've never heard this done before. And I thought, I realised, it dawned on me, why not shove these into the slow cooker? Marvellous idea. Awesome. Next step, you want to cover with boiling water Press them all down, and already they're starting to give off this wonderful coconutty scent. You might have a similar plant where you live, either gorse or broom. Both make a wonderful wine. White, tasty, delicious, delicate, a brilliant petal wine. The longer you simmer at a gentle heat, the more flavour will come out of the petals. So I'm going to leave the slow cooker on for a few more hours and then come back to it. In the meantime, why don't you have a look at how we collect the petals? So you said gorse wine? I did say gorse wine. Made in a slow cooker? But I think it will work really well. New method, new style. Let's give it a go. So let's go and pick some gorse. Come on, there's loads of it around here. You really are a weird homebrew guy, aren't you? Weird? Absolutely. <laughs> but come on, let's go do a little try. Nothing to lose. See, I want to pick them. Warm day, sunny day, a nice dry day. They taste awesome. They're great in salads, they're great in soups and stews and your broths. They're a great free food of adding nutrients, colour and flavour to your meals. So when you're picking the gorse flowers to make your gorse wine, you want to pick about two carrier bags worth to make one gallon of wine. Once you have harvested and collected all of your gorse flowers, you want to give them a wash, remove any caterpillars, butterflies, Daddy long legs, spiders, creepy crawlies, extract them all. You don't want any additional protein into your home brew. So give them a wash off and then let them dry for a bit, for a few hours. They are far better if they go into hot heat when they are dry. And we're back. The gorse flowers have been simmering away in the slow cooker for about two hours, which is awesome. So now, we we'll move on to the next stage, the next step. Really simple. We're going to pour the contents of your slow cooker, the liquid and the flowers, into your stock pot. And then you're going to add a kilo and a half of sugar. These slow cookers are awesome. I cook an awful lot with them. Meals, casseroles, stews, rabbits, chickens, ducks, you name it. Come, come, come. Look at the colour of this. That is such an amazing goldy colour. That's going to be a fantastic white. That is literally golden. Oh, and the smell of it as well. There's no added sugar yet, so it's going to be a bit bitter. But it smells beautiful. You're getting hints of courgettes. Definitely courgettes. No, wait, zucchinis are coming through. No, it's courgettes. Oh, and so earthy, real, multi... 
it's going to be beautiful. So now, yes, got side crap there. Pour a wee touch of pumpkin as well. And pour your gorse flowers and all the liquid into your saucepan. In your stock pot, you have about four litres of water, four pints of gorse flowers. And now we're going to add a kilo and a half of sugar. And give it a really good stir to dissolve all the sugar. It needs no additional heat at this stage. All you're doing is dissolving the sugar. Come and see. There's the aroma of pumpkins and courgettes coming through. Which is going to be fantastic. I would not have thought that these gorse flowers could produce such an aroma of pumpkins with coconuts and courgettes thrown in. It's, 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 it's a pumpkin pie. What I'm going to do now is put a lid on the stock pot and let it stand overnight. So join me in the morning to carry on and finish off this gorse flower wine. And hopefully we'll find out how the slow cooker has affected the wine itself. Welcome back. Your gorse flower wine smelling brilliant. So by now you should be ready to put it into your demijohn. You want to strain your leaves off, get the liquid and put it into your demijohn. So that's the next step. So first thing you need is your sieve. And then decant your liquid with your gorse flowers in into your bowl. It's easier to pour this way. So if you try pouring it straight into your demijohn, through a sieve, it goes everywhere. The colour is so golden and it smells so sweet and succulent. This is going to be an awesome wine. Shake off your surplus and then these can go straight into the compost heap. Before I put it into a demijohn, I'm going to add my yeast. I'm adding it now before I pour it into the demijohn so that loads of air can get into the yeast and make it ferment. And you want it to ferment really, really powerfully so oxygen is a great nutrient. I'm using generic wine yeast but I might be tempted at some point to try with a champagne yeast. I think the flavours will work really well. Add a sprinkle. You don't need a lot, about a teaspoon will do you. And then into your demijohn. As always, you don't want to fill your demijohn right the way to the top at this point. You want the yeast to have a big part in there and get really, really vigorous. So you want it to froth and foam, that is awesome. We want to simply install an airlock. Remove the funnel first. Set it aside for a week, or two weeks, however long it takes to ferment your dryness. Once it's dry, have a taste. And I will hopefully have a taste with you very, very soon. So why don't you subscribe and we can do the taste test together. Thank you.